there, I'm Joseph and today I'm here in central Portugal, Fundal, on my cherry farm. And my father's just about to pass me on the tractor so I'm going to have to make way for him. <laughs> Morning Dad, you alright? <laughs> what are you up to? Clearing some rubbish down here. Clearing some rubbish, take it up to the burning pile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going up to the barn because Lucilia's on her way. Okay. Alright, see you later. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not locked. It's not locked, it's open. <laughs> and that's what I was just about to tell you. I'm going up to my sheep barn. All the sheep are up there in the vineyard, so I need to go and shut the gate uh, to lock those out of the, uh, the pasture where our wooden barn is. And, um, and I need to go open the gate, which Dad just told me is open which is uh, unlocked rather, and that is onto the, uh, onto the roadside up there. I've got a friend coming, uh, my friend Lucilia. She, uh, she bales hay, she has um, a big sheep and goat dairy farm. And um, yeah, she bales hay. So I've asked her if she can deliver some hay for me because I've completely run out. We've got lots of sheep now. I think we've got, uh, we've got 20 sheep on the farm now. So <laughs> with all the little lambs, of course. Um, yeah, so I need to um, I need to go and open that gate, make sure that's open for, for uh, Lucilia or Lucilia's worker. I'm not sure who's coming. Uh, they're going to deliver the hay, and then uh, and then we're going to load it up into the barn. Let's go. So I can uh, I can hear the tractors on its way up. So I need to get to that gate and open it for him. I'm hoping they've, uh, they've got a few different types of tractors. Uh, Lucilia's got, got quite a few. She's, um, she's a, a big big player in the, in the farm world here. So she's got a few tractors. I'm hoping that she brought one of the smaller ones because I've got quite a narrow gateway. It's about a six foot gate. So I'm hoping that she brings uh, a tractor that's uh, at, <laughs> under six foot, ideally. We'll see. I can hear them coming up the road now. Sounds big. Might not be too big. No, no. So that's my friend Roy who works with Lucilia and uh, he was just letting me know that uh, yeah the tractor he's bought is quite a big one so I'm not sure if that's going to fit but we've got our little compact tractor that fits through so what we'll probably do is unload the bales here and then um, and then yeah move them along with our compact tractor. Yeah, so now cab dentro, definitivamente. Yeah, pode ser aqui, qualquer sítio. So yeah, Dad told me the gate's unlocked, but Dad was wrong. The uh, the keys on our on our tractor keys. So um so he's gone down to get the uh, to get the tractor and of course the keys. Roy's got to chuck them here for now, and then um and then yeah. Quieres ajuda?
Okay, so that's all the uh, all of the hay bales uh, loaded right up into the barn now. Our, our stores are, are full again now, going on into the spring. Uh, that will see us right through to the spring now and probably uh, a good part of the summer as well. Uh, and then obviously summertime, that is uh, that's baling time. So that's going to be that's going to be um, when we're looking to get our next our next bales. They chucked in chucked in this bale here for free as uh, it split. So I ordered twenty and they gave twenty one because one was split. So that was nice of them. Um, yeah, normally speaking, like I say, it's not baling time right now. If anyone needs bales right now, then it probably means that you're quite desperate. You've run out of stock. Uh, so the price goes up a little bit. Uh, that's to be expected. That happens every year. But we've only got such a, a certain amount of space in the barn here. So we um, we just order what we what we can get. And because we've not got a herd of 200 sheep or anything or cattle, it doesn't overly matter to us. Uh, the price of um, the price of bales here normally is around 250 to three euros fifty. Um, each bale is about 80 centimeters to one meter, that sort of size. And um, yeah, in the winter, the price can go up to uh, to 350, 450, depends on uh, who you're getting it from. But yeah, so we're happy now. The sheep are going to be happy. Uh, we'll be able to let them back down into the uh, into the the pasture here where the barn is, and um, and they'll have all their hay for the night now. Yeah. <laughs> and while I'm in the barn, I thought I'd just show you something. I showed you last week that we had the uh, the pigeons nesting, and I don't want to get too close to to upset. This is Daddy Pigeon here, the male pigeon. Uh, I'm reaching the camera out so he doesn't doesn't feel too upset. I don't think. Sorry, mate. Sorry. Oh, okay. So there's two two little eggs there. Go on, you can go back. Pigeons. They're um they're quite funny. The uh, the males and the females nest on the eggs. That's um that's not really normal in the bird world. So that's quite that's quite cool. I like that. <laughs> now we've finished um loading the bales up, like I say, and we're gonna go back down to the farmhouse and um and do something else. We're all hot. We're sweaty. We picked um. Pick the hottest day of the hottest day of the winter to do it, I think. But yeah, <laughs> let's go. Okay, so we've just finished all of the uh, all of the hay bales. They've gone into the barn now, and uh, we've quickly ran back to the house, got dressed, and now we're uh, now we're marching up the track up to the village because uh, today is the day after carnival, which is a, a Portuguese a Portuguese bank holiday and everything and a celebration. And uh, the day after carnival in our village specifically, they have uh, Carvalhal, which is um, a march up to the top of the Gardunha mountain. They all have uh, food up there. It's normally a, a a, a spit roasted lamb or something over a over a big barbecue and uh, it's uh, it's filled with lots of traditional musical instruments from the area so lots of lots of flutes and lots of drums and our friend is the drum teacher so we're going to go up there and see all of the kids from his school play the drums and the flutes So what's going to happen is the uh, the children are going to be marching from the primary school, which is at the top of this road, all the way down here to the uh, to the parish council, and uh, and they're going to be playing their flutes and their drums and everything with uh, with great gusto, and they're going to uh, they're going to go right to the right to the parish council, and then they're going to meet the uh, the older folk in the village there, and uh, they're going to take over from them with the flutes and the drums and march their way right up to the top of the mountain. So we've just been um, just been uh, following around the, the the village band here. It's a lot of the a uh, lot of the friendly locals that I see in the cafes and things. And um, yeah, the 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 president of the village, George, she's just uh, she just come over, said hello to Chloe. It's the first time she's seen her, and uh, she just said that she can hear all kids screaming in the distance. So they must be they must be on their way now. <laughs> what is that? Um, 
que é a Festa do Carvalhal? A Festa do Carvalhal, nós hoje estamos a comemorar os 132 anos da tomada do Carvalhal, Sim. que em 1890, uh, 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 há uns terrenos baldios lá do Carvalhal, e em 1890 o pessoal, uh, uh, a família Garrett quis retomar as terras, dizendo que eram delas, e o povo revoltou-se, subiu ao Carvalhal com os, uh, com os bombos, uh, gritando que o Carvalhal é nosso, uh, e obrigou o, uh, o, Garret, o feito do, do Garrete a dizer que o Carvalhal era nosso e a partir de essas terras foram tomadas e todos os anos na quarta-feira de cinza se sobe ao Carvalhal em dia de festa como está hoje a gritar que o Carvalhal era no, é nosso. Eu ouvi, eu ouvi as pessoas dizer Pronto, Carvalhal é nosso. É nosso. É, Exatamente, sei, 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 é, porque é. se grita o um grito de, que, é, que é, é, é um grito de guerra em 1890 pode-se quase dizer que foi, que foi a primeira revolução em Portugal. Muito obrigado a todos. Okay. Muito obrigado. obrigado. É, se tivéssemos mais tempo, fazíamos de maneira diferente. Sim. Porque a história bem bem contada ainda tem mais coisas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mas um dia a gente pode fazer isso. Sim. Tá bem? Acho que eu ouvi os crianças Sim. bem, não é? Bem, 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 obrigado, Dores. Tá. Ah. Obrigado, Jorge. Ah. Obrigado. Ah. Sim. Passa lá o dia, veem que é, é uma loucura. Uma loucura. Sim. Não é fácil lá chegar, não é muito fácil lá em chegar em cima. Sim. Mas há sempre muitos carros aí para lá. Yep. Vocês também têm esse carro? Sim. Yep. Nós vamos a pé. Nós vamos a pé. E 300 pessoas lá a almoçar. Ou se calhar até mais. Uau, o mais é. Com respeito. <risos> Vocês almoçam connosco, são okay. nossos convidados. Oh. Lá numa mesa e coisa, pronto. Mas vão. Obrigado, Jorge. Vamos, vamos, vamos. É, obrigado. Oh. <risos>
Olá friend. Luca, How como está? Tudo, tudo bem? Tudo bem? Tudo bem? Tudo that was good. amazing, well done, that was amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, <laughs> what we are supposed to do, it's yeah. to keep the roots rising up. Keep the traditions alive and yeah, fantastic. Totally. I thought all of the kids, all of the all of your kids in the lesson they've done absolutely fantastic. And, really, and, really and well. they are in primary school. Primary school, primary school. What, what are their ages? Six, between six and ten. Six and ten, okay, yeah, yeah, perfect. See you, Thanks enjoy. Luca, see you. So we've just witnessed all the uh, all the the lovely drums and festivities of Carvalhal this year, and um, yeah, that was really really lovely. Um, our community here, it's it's fantastic it really is a proper proper community and um, yeah we feel very very welcomed here uh, obviously Mariana's Portuguese and little Chloe she's gonna be she's gonna be Portuguese she is Portuguese and uh, yeah I'm, I'm of course a, a foreigner but I've been welcomed into this village with open arms and it's um, it just warms my heart it really does it warms my heart it's a uh, full of beautiful beautiful lovely people and they're all just like that how you saw up there they're, they're all very very good friends and uh, they've got a lot of time for everybody it's really really lovely but um yeah that's the that's the primary school that chloe's going to be going to up in the village there and um yeah apparently it's a, it's an absolutely fantastic school um and uh with with a queue for for uh, lots of lots of kids in the queue to to go every year so um so yeah of course chloe's in the village so she's going to be part of the catchment area so she'll go to that one but um yeah, what a fantastic, fantastic little festival that was. Yeah. <laughs> now we're going to go back to the farm and uh, I think it's time to do some work. So let's go. Okay, so it's been a while since I've been here. We're down in the veg patch now, and um, yeah, normally I do a uh, I do a summer garden and a winter garden. I do that every year. Uh, apart from apart from this winter's just gone. Uh, I didn't do one this year because we just had too much going on. Of course, little Chloe was born where I normally have Mariana. Of course, far, my father's helping on the farm as well. But the things like the chickens and the sheep and uh, the veg patch and everything that's normally me and Mariana that do that. And um, of course, yeah, because she was pregnant and then and then with little Chloe when she was born. We just didn't do it this year. I just I had to I had to optimize what I could use my time for. So unfortunately, there wasn't too many winter winter greens in our house this year, uh, not from our own farm anyway. <laughs> well, now we're down and it's just uh, it's just about to it's just about to be planting season. We're we're right right on top of planting season now. Really, uh, I'm a, a little bit late if anything for the first potatoes. Uh, not that that matters. They can go in the ground any time now. Um, but I do have to have to sort the ground out in the veg patch. Uh, most people will say uh, will say on the comments or whatever on here they'll say that I should be doing uh, no dig or something like that. Well, I never I never do no dig. Uh, I like to I like to do the veg patch the way that my grandparents taught me how to, and uh, and how their their grandparents taught them how to. So um, I know it might be might not be the best modern way to do it, but it's the way I like to do it. So I'm going to uh, going to be ploughing in the veg patch now, and uh, and then getting ready to uh, to plant the potatoes in the next few days. <laughs>
Okay, so that's the first uh, rough plow of the year now. Uh, that's that's got all, rid of all of those uh, big weeds and things that were there because of because of me not not um, not uh, tending to the veg patch over the winter, and um, and now we'll have to wait. Uh, we've chucked chucked some of those weeds over to the uh, over to the chickens, so now all of the soil is is nice and fine, broke up and everything, and all of the manure that we've had sitting in here over the winter that's all broken down over a couple of months during the winter, and it's all broken down, and now it's been churned into that soil. We'll go over now with a tiller uh, in a in a in a week or two's time, and uh, and make sure that it's all nicely finely tilled up, and that'll be that'll be then perfect to plant into, and. Uh, the, the manure that we're using here on the farm, of course, due to the animals here, is uh, is our is from our rabbits, from our rabbitry, uh, from our chickens, and, uh, and a little bit of sheep manure as well. We're we're not short on manure on the farm. There's there's definitely enough manure to go around. And um, yeah, then of course when it when it comes to planting time in a couple of weeks, we'll um, we'll pop a bit of uh, a bit of compost in there as well, and that'll be that'll be perfect. I'm looking forward to this year's potatoes. <laughs> Okay, we're now back from the veg patch. We've done a bit of a rough plough down there, like I was saying. And now we're in the uh, in the farmhouse kitchen, and uh, we've we've mustered up an appetite. So we're going to uh, we're going to be cooking a spot of lunch. So what have I got here today? I've got um, some regional wine. This is white wine from uh, from our local Adega, which is in Fundao. Uh, a very very small percentage of the grapes inside there will be from our farm. 0.1% or something like that. <laughs> we've got some uh, some creme fraiche here, 200 grams. We've got some lovely spring onions. We've got uh, a nice big leek, a lemon from Lloyd's Lemon Tree. We've got some uh, some green chili peppers here, and we've got some um, some pork loin as well. So today we're going to be cooking uh, pork medallions in a, a lemon and chili uh, cream sauce. So that should be nice.
Okay, we're now up in the vineyard and hey Molly, Molly's giving me a kiss. <laughs> As I said last week, we've now finished all of our pruning for the year. You can see all of the uh, all of the big piles of prunings behind me there. You can hear Mitzi shouting at a cat down there. <laughs> And um, yeah, that's a yearly job, the vineyard nah. pruning. That needs doing every uh, every winter time. We're right at the end of pruning season now. Now the, uh, nah. the buds are about to all open and uh, we'll be seeing the, the, the nah. makings of little leaves on the uh, on the vines in the next few, in the next nah. few, uh, in the next couple of weeks, I suppose. And um, yeah, yeah, we've finished. Uh, that's, a, that's a long old hard job that is. Here comes Lily. Come on, Lil. <laughs> hey, where you been? And your sister's behind you. Here comes Mitzi as well. <laughs> Hello. And um, yeah, so we finished all the pruning now. That's all done. And um, yeah, all of those, uh, all of those piles there. That is a yearly job, but uh, we've done a bit more this year than what we necessarily normally would because we've done a, a very hard prune where we've cut quite a lot back. Um, but yeah, it's all done now. So now, um, <laughs> now we're going to uh, to lock the sheep out of there for the year. Uh, for, for the for the for the uh, growing season, all of the sheep will be now put back into their into their normal pasture. Um, this will be off limits to them. All of the vines will then grow, and of course the grapes will come with it. But um, but yeah, we've had a lovely lovely week on the farm. Um, we, we got the ploughing done. It's not it's not really a plough. It's a it's a, a, a time harrow, but um, it, it does the same job as a plough. It breaks up the the hard clods of soil and everything. And then um, probably next week or the week after, depending how um, how the weather goes. It's starting to grey up now a little bit, so that would be nice if we can get a bit of rain. It's it's forecast for the next few days, so fingers crossed. But um, but yeah, if it rains, then I won't I won't till, and then uh, I'll wait for the ground to dry out again, and then I'll go through there. I'll do the tine harrow once more, probably just to break everything up nicely. Then uh, we'll pop the tiller on. That will go through, and that will break everything up really really finely. And uh, and then I've got a, a, a potato harvester which doubles up as a trench digger, and um, yeah, that will that will take all of the back back breaking work out of that. Uh, last year, last year we planted uh, quite a lot of quite a lot of potatoes. We, we did maybe maybe an acre or so of potatoes. Um, this year we're going to be doing a lot smaller amount. We don't we don't need that amount. We had to sell an awful lot of them off to the wholesaler last year, which was great. But um, of course it's it's backbreaking work planting that many potatoes, and especially considering our tractor is only a 15 horsepower compact tractor. It's a Yanmar 15 horsepower. It's um, it's a nice tractor. It's uh, it's fantastic for our farm. But for an acre of potatoes, it's hard work. Uh, more more so because of how uh, how narrow the, uh, the the back of the tractor is. So you have to do lots of lots of passes, lots of runs. Um, yeah, there's Godfrey standing there, our ram. <laughs> And all of our all of our little lambs are in here now. Lambing season's over. We've got uh, seven seven lambs. You can see them all there, I think. <laughs> if I remember correctly, we've got four four boys and three girls, and um, and they're all doing absolutely swell. They've grown astronomically. They must they must stand stand about double the height of when they were born now. Um, it won't be long, and they'll be they'll be going to their new homes. So another another month or so. One uh, one female is already reserved. And uh, I've got a couple of people that have asked me if I've got some lambs, but they've yet to come and have a look and, and pick out their their girls or boys. But yeah, so that'll be good. I'm glad to glad to see those go to new homes, or I will be glad to see those go to new homes. But yeah, we had a lovely week on the farm. Thank you all very much for watching. Uh, I know I said it the last couple of weeks. I'm going to say it again for anyone that didn't quite catch it. Um, when we hit 5,000 subscribers, I sent a gift out to all of our Patreons. Um, it was just a just a little parcel of uh, some regional things. Uh, I, was, I nearly told you what they were then, but I won't say. I'll leave it as a surprise. Um, a couple of regional things, a couple of things that were made by some of my friends in the village here. I commissioned them to make them, and um, yeah, hopefully, um, hopefully you will like them. Now that we're close to hitting 15,000 subscribers, I'm going to do the same again. So 5,000 we did it, now 15,000 we're going to do the same again. Different parcel this time, slightly different, but um, all regional things again. And hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll all like that. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I hope you all have an absolutely amazing week. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>